<clears throat> okay, good morning, everyone. Um, good morning. This is our uh, workshop in week nine. <clears throat> Today we're going to learn how to use uh, the four types of probability functions in R. Okay, they are the PQDR functions. Uh, and then we're going to uh, look some look at some examples of using this PQDR functions for normal distributions. Okay, then we finish. It's a, it will be a short workshop. Now <clears throat> there are four types of probability functions for random distributions uh, in the language of R. Um, so they are P, Q, D, R functions. Um, P, P stands for probability. The P function of a random distribution will return a cumulative probability for that distribution. Q stands for quantile. Uh, you can think of the Q function as the inverse function of the P function. So in, in the P function, given the value of the random variable, the P function will return a cumulative probability. That is the probability of this random distribution, uh, random variable being or less than that value. The Q function is just the opposite. So for a random distribution, uh, you give the you give the Q function a probability, which has to be a cumulative probability. The Q function will return the quantile. Okay. Yeah. Um, the D function, the next one, D function, D represents density. So if the distribution is continuous, the D function will be the density function. Okay. And then if the distribution is discrete, the D function is actually a mass function. So if the function distribution is um, <coughs> discrete, for example, binomial distribution uh, or Poisson distribution, um, the D function will give you the probability of this random variable being some specific value. Okay. Um, but if the distribution is continuous, like normal distribution or T distribution, uh, the D function will return the density value um, for a given um, value for the random variable. Okay. Uh, density is not the probability of X being some value. Yeah. Um, the last one, the R function of a random distribution will, uh, it can generate um, pseudo random and observations from a given distribution. So you can specify a, a random distribution and use its R function to generate generate a certain amount of uh, realizations of that distribution. Okay, so these are the basic four types of probability functions of a random distribution in R. And if you have a question about any of them, just put a question mark and then and then you can access the help menu for that function. Um, so for example, if the uh, distribution is normal, then the D function of normal will be D norm. 
okay, and R function for normal distribution maybe R naught, etc., etc. Um, and R provides a set of commands for some commonly used random distributions. So here are the how many are the like 10, 20 commonly used um, random distributions. Some are continuous, some are discrete. And for each of these um, random distributions, um, there are four types of functions, P, Q, D, R. Okay, yeah. For example, for, 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 for T distribution, students T distribution, the P function will be PT, and the Q function will be QT, and the other two are DT and RT. Okay, yeah. All right, um, next, we're going to look at how to use these four types of functions uh, for normal distribution. First of all, uh, what is normal distribution? Um, the, the, um, all, more, all normal distributions, they have the same type of um, kind of look of their density function, which you can see in your lecture slide. But here I just want to uh, emphasize, on, uh, emphasize one thing for normal distributions. Uh, that is the... Um, connection between Z score and probability. So for all normal distributions, uh, no matter what value you have for the mean or variance or standard deviation, uh, they all have the same um, structure or they all follow the same rule. Um, <clears throat> we know that by changing the value of mean, you can change the location of the bell shaped curve of a normal distribution. And if you change the value of variance or standard deviation, you can change the, the, the shape of the bell shaped curve. If the standard deviation is small, the bell shaped curve will be kind of skinny. And if the standard deviation is large, the bell shaped curve will be like round, wider. But no matter what value you use for the mean and the standard deviation, um, as long as the distribution is normally is, is normal, the density function is follow that specific mathematical structure. Um, then uh, there's a connection between the z-score and the probability. So as indicated in uh, on this graph, um, if the value is one standard deviation away from the mean, then the probability will be about 68%. If the value is a two standard deviation away from the, the mean, then and the probability uh, within, within the center range will be about 95%. And if the value is a three standard deviation above or below the mean, the probability uh, uh, of that range will be 99.7%, uh, almost 100%. So this rule uh, applies to all normal distributions. We, we call this empirical rule of normal distributions. Um, <clears throat> and if you want to, more, want to know more detailed Connection between the Z score and the probability. For example, uh, what's the probability of observing a value uh, being 0 0.7 standard deviations around the mean? And then you have to uh, refer to a normal distribution table or use a use a computer. Um, for example, the <coughs> the probability function and normal distribution in R studio uh, to work out the answer. Uh, so basically, so if there's a normal, if the distribution is normal, is normal, then there's a connection between the Z score of the random variables value and the probability. Um, so there's a 
you know the Z score, you know the associated probabilities. Uh, or the other way, if you, if you know the probability of some random uh, of the value, and then you know the Z score associated with the probability. Uh, this only uh, uh, happens uh, when the distribution is normal. Okay, yeah, and normal distribution is very important be because um, we found that in the real world, many things uh, can be um, assumed to follow a normal distribution. Okay, for example, measurement errors, etc. Et um, so first of all, let's have a have a look at an example of using the the p function of normal distribution, p norm. Okay, so for example here, um, I have a question. So suppose IQ, intelligence quotient, scores are normally distribution with a mean of 100 and variance of 225. Okay, so uh, we have a random variable, which is the IQ score of a person. And then um, according to some theory, the distribution of IQ score is normal in the population. OK, and then we know the normal distributions mean and the standard deviation, which is which are 125. Um, what is the probability that a random person's IQ um, is higher than 124? So this is a typical question of a normal distribution. So we are given the distributions, information, the shape, parameters that that is that, that are mean and the variance, and then we are after a probability associated with a specific value of this random distribution. In this case, the probability of this random variable being higher than 125. Um, in R, the P norm function for normal distributions will return the cumulative probability of a normal distribution's value. Cumulative probability means the probability of this random variable's value being equal to or less than a specific value. So if I use P norm this function here, and I specify the distribution's mean and the standard deviation, and then I put the value 125 in the P norm function, the P norm function will return the probability of this random variable being equal or less than 125. But we want the probability of this random variable being higher than 125. So we have to take um, the cumulative probability out of 100%, right? Using the complement rule of a normal, of a probability theory. Okay, the probability of X being equal less than something is, is 100% of minus the probability of X higher than something, right? So, <clears throat> all right, so the answer is 1 minus P norm 125 comma mean equal to 100 and the standard deviation equal to the square root of 225, right? Um, so we can have a look at in our studio. So if I type one minus p norm, so how to spot, how to use the p norm? You have, to, you have to tell the value of the random variable we are interested in, which is one hundred twenty-five. Um, which is to quantize basically, yeah. And the mean is equal to one hundred, right? And the standard deviation. Standard deviation, uh, we are given the variance, so the standard deviation will be square root of the variance. Okay, so S Q R P of variance. 
All right, enter. Yep. The probability of observing a random person's IQ score uh, being higher than 125 will be um, like 4.7, 4.8%, less than 5%. Okay, yeah. So basically, 125 is the approximately the 95th percentile of this distribution because about 95% of the IQ scores in the population would be less than 125. Okay. But for continuous distributions, the boundary doesn't really matter. Being higher than 125, being higher or equal to 125 doesn't matter because the probability of the random variable being a specific value for continuous distribution is actually zero. Um, theoretically, yeah, we, we cannot really quantify the probability of X being a specific value precisely for a continuous distribution. We can only quantify the probability of the random variable within some interval, okay, within some range. All right, next, um, the quantile function of normal distribution. So this one you can think of, uh, of it as the opposite of the P uh, function. So in P fun previously in P function, we give a quantile, we give a value of the random variable, we can get a cumulative probability. Uh, for Q function, we give the function a pr cumulative probability, the function will return a uh, return the, the quantile, the value of the random variable. So again, um, the question is, suppose the IQ score of normally distributed with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15, all right, same distribution actually. Uh, what is the 50th, 95th percentile of the um, distri distribution? In other words, at, at um, and what value of IQ score? Um, there are 95% of scores less than that value and 5% scores um, uh, being higher than that value. Okay, so uh, you can think of as a, uh, you have to reach that score to join the top 5% top club <laughs> of high IQ people in the population of the distribution. All right, the answer is quite easy. Um, we, we know the distribution, the mean is 100, standard deviation is 15, and then in, in question we are actually given the cumulative probability, that is 95%, um, 0 0.95, and, and then just a Q-norm distribution, a Q-norm function, we can, we can get a quantile. Okay, so here, that's the calculation. Just the type Q-norm. The cumulative probability is zero. In is 100, and the standard is deviation is 15. 124.6, right? approximately 125. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that is a Q function of normal distribution. The next one is a. Uh, uh, let's have a look at the R function first. The R function of normal distribution is called the R norm. Uh, this function will can generate a certain number of uh, uh, random observations from a specific normal distribution. Uh, you, 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 you tell the, the computer. So let's say I want to generate 1,000 random draws uh, from a normal distribution with a mean of 100 and standard deviation of 15. Um, and then I can, I'm going to um, create a data frame of this 1000 random draws. Okay, yeah, that is the code. 
the functions are known. Again, you tell the function how many observation you want to create, and then the normal distributions, parameters, the mean, and standard deviation. And then I just put, it, put the whole thing into a data frame. The data frame may have a, a column. Column's name will be R. The, the variable, variable's name will be R. And the data frame's name is norm data. Okay, let's do this. So if I don't, let's have a look at what happened if I just create a, this is just a vector. Yeah. A vector or yeah, vector. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then we're going to create a data frame. So first of all, we have the name of our data frame. That's that's called normal data. It comes from a data frame using this vector R. All right, I'll have a data frame now. This is 1,000 observations, 1,000 rows, and one call in one column called R. And they are the random um, draws from normal distributions with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 50. Okay. If you need to generate random numbers, that's how we do it. And you can save your data frame and your data frame, you can export the file, the data file, okay? Into a spreadsheet or CSV file or something. We talked about that already in the first week. All right, and last one. Um, use the the density um, uh, function of a normal distribution. So this now this one we're going to do a, a do a little um, uh, um review analysis. So we have already generated 1,000 random draws from a normal distribution with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. Uh, and now we're going to assess how good the random draws are. So we're going to draw a histogram of the 1,000 random draws we, 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 uh, we created, we obtained from the R function on this page. Uh, and then we should uh, expect uh, to see a kind of bell shaped uh, histogram of those one, uh, one, 1,000 random draws. Okay. And then I, I will also um, uh, request a density curve based on those 1,000 random draws. I'm going to color the density curve uh, red. And, and then I'm going to uh, also uh, plot the D norm function, the density function of the distribution uh, using a, a blue curve. OK, so the graph actually is, is already here. So it's a histogram. Um, and then 
um, we're going to put plot a, a red estimated density curve of those 1000 random numbers and a blue density curve of the theoretical density function of the normal distribution using the denom function. So we have three things on this graph, a histogram, a, a histogram of relative frequencies because we are combining the histo the frequencies, relative frequencies uh, with the densities. Okay, uh, a red curve, which is the estimated density curve of those 1000 draws and a theoretical blue curve, that is the theoretical density values function of the um, normal distribution. OK, um, again, we're going to use ggplot2. So uh, we call the ggplot2 out, library ggplot2, and then ggplot2, the data will be normal data we just created before. And uh, uh, horizontal axis is the variable name uh, R. We're going to have a geometry of histogram, but we want the density. That's how we have a density of histogram. OK. And then we're going to um, add the geometry of density of the data. And then the color will be red. And then we're going to plot a step function. Remember how to plot a mathematical function on ggplot? We can use a step function. Um, in ggplot, OK? And then the uh, geometry will be line, and the function is here. That's the step function, OK? It's a, it's a density function. Of a normal distribution with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 50. And then um, a color at blue, OK? And background black and white. And I label the horizontal axis as random, randomly generated numbers. All right, let's do it. See if it works. Hope so. Okay, open the uh, script. This time it should, should be working, I guess. Online oh, this thing. Um, Thank you, Mom. And I copy from the PDF some some brackets just some bracket gone missing. Ah, yeah, it's my noise. Um, That function. Just mm. nine. Color is blue. Mm. 
Background in black and white. Let's try again. Got it? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, sorry. I was copying the code from PDF. Something got missing. So when you are um, doing an exercise with this example, just type the code line by line according to my example in the PDF. Yeah. So don't just copy and paste. <laughs> it doesn't work. All right. Um, I believe the code should be right. Just my just the code in PowerPoint. That's the PDF I share with you. Exactly the same. Yeah. But when you copy and paste between PDF and R Studio and uh, something weird happen, just type it. All right, so uh, you can export your, your graph if you like. And we can see that um, the histogram looks quite normal. It's a spell shaped, symmetrical. The center is a 100, and the variance is a probably um, 15. Uh, the, the standard deviation is probably 15. Right? Yeah. And you look at the two curves. The red curve is the density curve based on the 1,000 random draws. And the blue curve is the theoretical density curve of the normal distribution. And then um, ideally, we want to say that blue curve and the red curve, they are kind of very close to each other. And in this case, it's not too bad. It's a little bit shifted, but uh, it's quite close. Yeah, quite close. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, Different people may have different results because we didn't set the random seed number. Um, so it's, if you if you want to control um, the results, you want, you want every, everyone to get the same results using this uh, R language, we have to set the random seed number. OK, and then everyone will get the same results. They get the same observations, random numbers, 1000 random numbers. They are not truly random. They are pseudo random because they are generated according to some algorithms. And, and then if we set a random seed, that will control the study, control the, the, the random number generation algorithm, and then everyone will get the same results as long as we're using, using the same syntax. It's not truly random, but random enough. All right. Um, that's all for today. Make sure you log a attendance if you can, and then leave some feedback. The links are in the PDF document I shared with you. And help other people if you can. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.